Leonard Reggio, who built Barnes & Noble into a book-selling empire, dies at 83 NEW York. Leonard Reggio, a brash, self-styled underdog who transformed the publishing industry by building Barnes & Noble into the country's most powerful bookseller before his company was overtaken by the rise of Amazon.com, has died at age 83. Reggio died Tuesday following a valiant battle with Alzheimer's disease, according to a statement issued by his family. He had stepped down as chairman in 2019 after the chain was sold to the hedge fund Elliott Advisors. His leadership spanned decades, during which he not only grew the company but also nurtured a culture of innovation and a love for reading, reads a statement from Barnes & Noble. Reggio's near half-century reign began in 1971 when he used a $1.2 million loan to purchase Barnes & Noble's name and the flagship store on Lower Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. He acquired hundreds of new stores over the next 20 years and in the 1990s launched what became a nationwide empire of superstores that combined a chain's discount prices and massive capacity with the cozy appeal of couches, reading chairs, and cafes, our bookstores were designed to be welcoming as opposed to intimidating, Reggio told the New York Times in 2016. These weren't elitist places. You could go in, get a cup of coffee, sit down and read a book for as long as you like, use the restroom. These were innovations that we had that no one thought was possible. He grew up working class in New York City, liked to say he preferred socializing with childhood pals over fellow business leaders, and was informal enough among associates to be known as Lenny. But in his time, no one in the book world was more feared. With the power to make any given book a bestseller, or a flop, to alter the market on an idle whim, Reggio could terrify publishers simply by suggesting prices were too high, or that he might sign up such top sellers as Stephen King and John Grisham and publish them himself. He even tried to buy the country's biggest book wholesaler, Ingram, in 1999, but backed off after facing government resistance. By the end of the 1990s, an estimated one of every eight books sold in the U.S. were purchased through the chain, where front table displays were so valuable that publishers paid thousands of dollars to have their books included. Thousands of independent sellers went out of business, even as Reggio insisted that he was expanding the market by opening up in neighborhoods without an existing store. Instead, independent owners spoke of being overwhelmed by competition from both Barnes & Noble and Borders Book Group the rival chains, sometimes setting up stores in close proximity to each other and to the locally owned business. Barnes & Noble became so identified as an overdog that one of the 1990s most popular romantic comedies, You've Got Mail, starred Tom Hanks as an executive for the Fox Books chain and Meg Ryan as the owner of an endangered independent store in Manhattan, we are going to seduce them with our square footage and our discounts and our deep armchairs and our cappuccino, Hanks's character confidently declares, they're going to hate us at the beginning, but we'll get them in the end. Acrimony from independent booksellers. For a time, it seemed industry conversation was an ongoing response to Barnes & Noble. Publishers were known to change the cover or title of a book simply because a Barnes & Noble official had objected. Angela's Ashes author Frank McCourt found himself condemned by the American Booksellers Association, the trade organization for independence, after agreeing to appear in a Barnes & Noble commercial. On the floor of the industry's annual national trade show, long hosted by the ABBA, independent store employees would hiss at attendees wearing Barnes & Noble badges when novelist Russell Banks, addressing Barnes & Noble's annual shareholder meeting in 1995, declared that he was both a stockholder and a happy b and customer. Some independent sellers stopped offering his books, you must know that I'll never read, buy, or sell another word you write. Richard Haworth, owner of Square Books in Oxford, Mississippi, wrote to him, These are the kindest things I can think of to say to you. Tensions led to legal action when the ABBA, on the eve of the 1994 convention, announced it was suing Barnes & Noble and five leading publishers for unfair trade practices. Some of the publishers were so angered they boycotted the gathering the following year, and only returned after the ABBA sold the show to read exhibitions. In 1998, the ABBA S. 